India's first interstate river interlinking project, the Gain Betwa Link project, got cabinet approval in 2014. Recently, the steering committee of the Gain Betwa Link project held its third meeting in New Delhi. The Gain Betwa Link project aims to transfer surplus water from the Gain River to the Betwa Basin through a 230 km long concrete canal that will be fed by the new Dodhan Dam on the Gain to be built within Panna Tiger Reserve to irrigate India's worst drought-prone Bundelkhand region. The dam will generate 103 megawatt of hydroelectric power and is expected to irrigate 6.3 lakh hectares of land every year. The project cost 44,605 crore rupees in 2021 to water the Bundelkhand region. The project has not yet received a complete forest clearance as the National Green Tribunal is currently hearing a challenge to the project's environmental approval. The surplus and deficit model lacks a scientific foundation and may jeopardize the Panna district's water security. The development of a high reservoir dam on the Kane River in the Panna National Park and Tiger Reserve for the Kane Betwa Link project, according to the Supreme Court, is in violation of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. If the new dam is constructed, the deep gorges of Panna will be drowned. The key wildlife species that will be affected include endangered vultures and critically endangered Gangetic Gharial in the Kane Gharial Sanctuary. About 20,000 people will be affected due to the land submergence by the Dodan Reservoir and Makodia Reservoir. There is a significant financial expense associated with project implementation and maintenance. Another challenge would be the Kane River flows 60 to 70 feet lower than the Betwa River. It requires at least 30% of the 103 megawatt produced power to pump the water up. The government is developing a larger Panna tiger landscape which should be created for Panna's tigers in any case. To ensure its implementation, the Greater Panna Landscape Council has been constituted. Restoring Bundelkhand's erstwhile Chandel period lakes and ponds should be considered. The cost of rejuvenating these small water bodies are very low and the benefits are very visible, certain and considerable. Thus, the approach to the interlinking of rivers should be ecocentric, not anthropocentric. That's all for the video. I hope you found this informative. Thank you for watching.